Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your glory be to the Lord God Almighty. We praise you and magnify you, God. We lift you up in this place. You alone are worthy. You deserve endless praise. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same sun. You're worthy. So worthy God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. With the fruit of my lips, I give you thanks. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you are good. Thank you that there is no God alive but you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. I will praise you continually. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You've done so much for me. You've done so much for me. I praise you, God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to you, God.
everybody come on let's give him praise oh hallelujah we love you we praise you we adore you we exalt you we magnify your name hallelujah blessed is the name of the lord from the rising of the sun to the very going down of the same your name is to be praised we exalt you oh our father 
We exalt you, our God. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Thank you for your faithfulness to us. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed for us. Thank you for our names being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, those of us that have accepted you as our personal Savior and Lord. This is the day that you have made. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to the very going down of the same, your name is to be praised. We will offer the sacrifice of praise to you continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto your name. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. And Father, we give thanks unto you for all of your goodness, your mercy, your faithfulness, your wonderful works, redemption. Oh, we love you, Lord. What manner of love is this that you have bestowed upon us? that we can be called the sons of God. What an honor it is to be called sons of God, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ. We give you praise this morning. We're glad to be a part of your family. Thank you for covenant relationship. Thank you for peace that passeth all understanding. Thank you for being on our side. Thank you that no weapon formed against us prospers. We give you glory, Father. You've kept us this far, and you will continue to keep us. You will deliver us from the hand of the enemy continually. We thank you for divine protection around us. Thank you for the greater one that's in us than he that is in the world. We thank you for raising us up together to sit in heavenly places in in Christ Jesus. We give you praise, honor, and glory. We acknowledge that you are the Lord our God that heals us and takes sickness out of our midst. We do thank you for the presence and ministry and leadership in person of the Holy Spirit to guide us in the truth and show us things, to teach us, to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and of judgment. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, those in our church family that may be out of town and traveling this afternoon or, or even tomorrow, we thank you for their divine protection and bringing them back safely in the name of Jesus. Be glorified in our midst today as we humble ourselves under your mighty hand and humble ourselves in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, thank you for being in church. Love on your brothers and sisters. Greet them this morning. And thank you for joining us. Those of you that are joining us through live streaming, we welcome you this morning. Thank you for being a part of our Sunday morning service and invite your friends and loved ones to join us uh, in service. Uh, they can uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just tell them what to do. Thank you for being with us this morning. All right. Thank you, singers, so very much. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Let's see here. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? Yes. Did you eat too much? Yes. Me too. Me too. <laughs> me too. My, my pants fit this morning. I ate so much. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Everybody be talking about, you skinny, you skinny, your pants dropping. Your pants. Well, they didn't drop this morning. I tell you that much. <laughs> We went over Joy's house, and she had a spread like a, I don't know what, man. It's almost like being at, being at a buffet, and, and uh, it was just all so good. And she had so many different desserts, and, and I just, it was all so good. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. It was all so good. Praise the Lord. All right, let's see. Jonathan Shaw, Pastor Long's son-in-law. Pastor Long, he's our pastor assigned over at Church in the City. Uh, father passed on November the 25th, and uh, we want to pray for Pastor Long and the family and the Shaw family. Deborah Shannon, a member of our church, is scheduled for surgery on this coming Tuesday, and we want to lift her up. And then we have baby dedications today, y'all. Shout about that, somebody. <laughs> Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we lift up 
uh, Pastor Long and the family and the Shaw family in Jesus' name. We thank you for strengthening them, ministering to them, comforting them, getting them through this time in the name of Jesus. And Lord, your grace is sufficient. So Lord, let them tap into that grace that you've made available. Your word says, be strong in the grace in the name of Jesus. We lift up our sister Deborah, Father. We thank you for successful surgery this Tuesday. If it's uh, performed, we thank you for overseeing it all. We thank you for angelic ministry there in the name of Jesus. We thank you for great precision and accuracy being given to the surgeon and those involved. And Lord, thank you that it will be free of complication and her recovery, Lord, will be normal and be and will also be without abnormalities in Jesus' name. And we cast the care of it over upon you. Father, thank you for healing throughout our church family, Lord, and we've lifted up names to you in the past. So you know who they are. And those that we don't know about that have been challenged, Lord, we thank you for miracles within their physical bodies. Let the anointing destroy yokes in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's praise God for it for a moment. <laughs> Father, we do praise you. Hallelujah. For lifing our brothers and sisters with your life. We thank you, Father, that you sent your word and healed us. Glory to God and took sickness out of our midst. We thank you that you forgive all of our iniquities. You heal all of our diseases. We thank you that by Jesus' stripes we were and therefore we are healed. Hallelujah. Shout about it, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Let's see here. Did you guys hear that Discover card won't allow you to use the card uh, to donate to uh, American Family Association? Did you hear about that? Oh. You know, they just like, I'm telling you, they, they just, they're gone, you know, uh, with this political stuff. And so if you have a Discover card, American Family Association is asking that you, um, you know, you just rebel and revolt by cutting up the card. And when you send in your next payment with the, with the, have the cut up card in there and tell them you're a Christian. Amen. Uh, and, you know, that happened to uh, Jim Baker. You know that, right? That uh, supporters have to write checks or, or whatever, money orders or something like that because credit cards and different institutions won't allow Christians to donate to his ministry through their credit card. And now Discover Card is doing that to the American Family Association. So if you carry a D Discover Card, you might want to think about getting rid of it. Amen. Amen. And uh, that's your decision, of course, right? And they ask them about it. I wrote a little note here. American Family Association, they ask why. And uh, Discover Card said, you're violating our operating regulations. You're violating our operating regulations. And so they said, what does that mean? And they never got an answer to, you know, and so uh, they refused to respond. And so uh, I just think this polit politically correct bias stuff is just going too far. And we have to make sure that as Christians, when we have opportunity to take our stand, we take it. Amen. Yeah. All right. This is another way that we have opportunity. All right. Let's see here. Um, Attention parents of, no, that's in our video. So let's have our video announcements, please. We are so glad you joined us for our service here at Victory, where we are touching and changing lives for the glory of God. Please pay attention to the following announcements. Hey ladies, LOV Vesper service will be held this Friday at 7.30 p.m. at our Campus 3 location. Dress is completely casual. Please join us for this time of fellowship and getting along with God. On Sunday, December 6th at 5.30 p.m., Pastor Gould will be meeting with those who have completed their new members classes. The meeting will be held in the Victory Youth Building Dining Room. If you have your new members card, please bring it with you to turn in. Please sign in with our Ministry of Helps team when you arrive. Parents, there will be a youth prayer partner training starting next Sunday, December 6th at 5.30 p.m. in the Dome Meeting Room. If you would like your youth to participate and learn how to minister salvation, rededication, and other spiritual needs, please sign them up at the courtesy booth. The last day to sign up is next Sunday after morning service. Attention all VCC widows and widowers. Come join Journey to Joy for a Christmas fellowship luncheon on Saturday, December 12th at 2 p.m. in the Victory Youth Building dining room. We will observe social distancing guidelines. 
please RSVP by Sunday, December 6th. We will be at the booth across from the Word Shop after service. The cost is $15. Attention VCC members. Having trouble recalling or just need to know how to access your contribution statement online? Please go to our website, www.bccenter.net, for an instruction sheet located at the bottom of the Give page. Paper 2020 contribution statements will be available in the front foyer on Sunday, January 24th for all members 65 and up that don't have email. Giving online is quick and easy. Go to vccenter.net. Click on the Give tab on the navigation bar in the header. Once on that page, scroll down and there are instructions to show you how to give now. Click on the gold Give Now button and it will take you to the online donation page. There, you can simply fill in the information and submit your donation. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Thank you for watching the VCC announcements. And don't forget, you can find these announcements, events, and more on the Victory Christian Center Church app. Get it at the Google Play or Apple App Store. Please enjoy service. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sally, give Sally a hand. She works me, boy. She works me. <laughs> no, she does a great job. Thank you, Sally, for all that you do. Praise God. You know, I came across something about teen indoctrination. Maybe they're ready to put that on the screen. It was through a Gary Bauer report relative to teen indoctrination that parents need to be aware of. You guys ready for that? If not, just let me know when. Uh, teen indoctrination. We must be eagle-eyed he wrote about what our children and grandchildren are reading. If they are reading Teen Vogue, there's a huge problem. It's filled with socialist poison. And uh, the outlet recently published a column that condemns America for being founded on genocide and slavery. The column denounces America as an empire and declares at its core, America's values are white supremacy and capitalism. Even Joe Biden's call for unity is rejected as nationalist propaganda, with the author asking, why should people who have been systematically oppressed be asked to hold hands with their oppressors? And so we just want you to be aware that if you have a teenager and you have grandchildren of age, you know, to, to, to tap into the uh, teen bowl, you want to just tell them, you know, you're not reading that. That stuff is so poisonous and so anti-God and anti-America and everything else. And so, you know, we, ha we have a responsibility to protect your children, right? And to train them in the way that they should go, right? Hello, y'all. All right, praise God. Just wanted to share that with you. Always wanted to be a blessing to you and, and help you. And, and as Mrs. Gould, in the, you know, when she shares, you know, uh, world events and current events and stuff like that, she says she's just doing this because she doesn't want us to be ignorant. Isn't that right? And, and so please, 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 you know, we're not victims. We're more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors. So don't buy into this philosophy and this stuff out here, this radical left agenda. Please don't buy into it in Jesus' name. Stay, stay connected to the word of God. Stay connected to the things of God. Amen. All right, you ready to give? All right, if you're in need of an offering envelope, if you would, lift your hand at this time. Please allow our ushers to minister to you. They're looking around and headed in your direction. Thank you for your faithfulness and your giving as I endeavor to uh, share with you. I'm so appreciative uh, and uh, we thank God for you. Those that are giving online and giving through your phone and those that mail in your tithes and offerings, thank you so very, very much. All right, you look like you got your offering envelopes. Minister Chapman is going to exhort us this morning. And so let's receive our exhortation. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to read from John 21, starting in verse 2. Simon Peter, <clears throat> Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. So they said to him, we are going with you also. They went out and immediately, <clears throat> excuse me, and immediately got into the boat. And that night they caught nothing. That's tough when you're working and you don't have nothing to show for, right? So they caught nothing that night, 
But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? They answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast and now they were not able to draw it, draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved, he said to Peter, it is the Lord. You ever got blessed and said, well, that was God right there. Amen. That's what that disciple said. Hey, that was, that was God right there. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from the land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they come to land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to the land full of large fish, not little fish, not itty bitty fish. He dragged some large fish. 153. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. What a great example of how God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. And one of the reasons why I wanted to read this scripture is because many times in our lives when we're working or in the past we have worked, we didn't have anything to show for it. Because by the time we paid our bills, by the time we put gas in the car, by the time we got groceries, that was it. But you know, when you get God involved in your finances, when you're a tither and a giver, you can have an expectation. You can expect that God is opening up the windows of heaven and he's pouring out blessings that you don't have room to receive. And just like the disciples, initially they had nothing. But by, by the time they finished dealing with Jesus, they had 130 some fish. I don't know about you, but a lot of times when people go fishing, they just want to fill up the cooler. <laughs> it was more than enough. And so we just thank God that God is able. We thank God that he is capable of doing exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. And also remember this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? So with that being said, if you would, please fill out your checks and your offering envelopes if you haven't done so already. Make your checks payable to Victory Christian Center, or you may abbreviate by putting VCC. No matter where you find yourself today financially, there's nothing too hard for God. He knows how to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever ask or think. Amen? If you would, please stand to your feet. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord God, that you are watching over your word to perform it. We thank you, Lord God, that as we give, it's given to us again, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. We thank you, Lord God, that you are opening up the windows of heaven and pouring us out blessings that we don't have room to receive. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your faithfulness to your word. And we will always be careful to give you the praise, honor, and glory for what you're doing. We will continue to stand on your, stand on your word, for you're faithful to it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord of the harvest. Father, we bless you. We praise you. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank that you are alert and active and watching over your word to perform it. We thank you that as we give, it's given to us again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Men give it to our bosom. We thank you for your integrity. We trust in it and we depend on it. We think that it is impossible for you to lie. We give you the praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, if you would, at this time, let's receive the gifts.
lift up your hands and receive whatever you need in this room. He's here in this room right now. He's here in this room right now. My Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Let's adore him. There is none like you and none to be compared, O oh God. And there is nothing like your presence. Nothing. No place. No place to be that's better than in your presence. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence in his place. Thank you so much. You are God and God alone. There is absolutely no one to be compared to you, oh God. We worship you. We adore you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for showing us your love. All over this room, let your presence minister to and touch lives. I command healing now to flow into broken places, broken hearts, broken bones, 
heal brokenness. Thank you, Lord, for touching our bodies. Because Jesus took our infirmities. He bore our sicknesses. And with his wounds, we are healed. So thank you for healing in our skin. Thank you for irritation being removed. I reverse the damage in the name of Jesus and speak life and healing into the skin. Thank you for healing in the nostrils. Thank you for clearing up the drainage stopping the drainage removing the congestion thank you for healing the eyes and removing the irritation from the eyes thank you Lord I command pain to go from the neck and the shoulders and the back of the legs in the name of Jesus You're so good. You're so sweet. You're so wonderful. Oh, we worship you, Lord. You are our God beside you. There is no one else. You are the one our soul longs for. Oh, to be close to you. As we draw near to you, draw near to us, O oh God. You are everything. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Healing in the ear as well, Father. Thank you for healing in the ear. Jesus Christ. If you experience the touch of God in your body and you can tell the difference right now, would you stand please? Just stand up. You've experienced the healing touch of God wherever you are. Just stand up all over the room. You don't have to come down. Just, just stand where you are. You can tell that God has touched you and you can tell the difference in your Just remain standing and worshiping him because he's not quite done yet. He's still healing right now. As you experience that healing touch, then just stand to acknowledge it. He's healing still. He's still moving in this place. Precious Jesus, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, Father, we worship you and adore you. It's only you that can do what you're doing right now. No man can take the credit for it or the glory for it. It's because of you, because of your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Thank you for letting us come into this place this morning and experience your presence and your healing touch. I command light be. Let there be light. Removing the darkness. Healing life flowing in the chest in Jesus' name. Tightness goes away in Jesus' precious name. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Healing in the toes. Jesus' name. Toes being healed right now. In the name of Jesus. He is so, so, so good. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for touching our bodies. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank 
you, Father, for each and every one that's standing right now all over, all over the auditorium, signifying that they have felt your healing touch. We thank you that you are the Lord our God who heals us. You're the healer of us all. These that are standing have already experienced a manifestation. They can tell a difference in their bodies. It's because of you and your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. And we thank you for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just stand with them now and worship the Lord for what he's done. we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, Hallelujah. If you're watching by live streaming and you want to testify of uh, a healing that manifested in your body, you can call 704-525-8638 and share your testimony. You know, Jesus wants to hug you if you're feeling lonely, if you're by yourself and you you uh, haven't been able to get out. You're not alone. Let him hug you this morning. Receive his hug. Receive his embrace. And even if you're here in the, in the auditorium and you've been feeling alone, feeling like you're struggling with something by yourself, he has said, I will never leave you 
and I will never forsake you. Accept it. Let him know you receive his presence and his love with you at this time. Sing in the spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the angels that are present and active. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the ministering angels active in this room. Thank you for the ministering angels active on behalf of those that are watching. You have given your angels a charge concerning us. They are all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for us as heirs of salvation. So we boldly declare that we have help and there is more that be with us than they are with them. No weapon formed against us will prosper. Greater are you who is in us than he who is in the world. And we give you glory for it. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give him glory. Hallelujah. Blessed is the name of the Lord our God. Blessed is the name of the Lord our God. Thank you, Father, for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, all that you have done, are doing, and will do. We give you glory for it. Hallelujah. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Thank you for loving us the way that you do, wrapping your arms around us. Oh, thank you for expressing, God, your kindness toward us. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you for it. Amen, amen. I forgot we got baby dedications. You may be seated. <laughs> it just hit me. Parents, if you would bring your uh, children down to the front at this time. And uh, please forgive me for it uh, escaping me more momentarily. Marlon, get the mic and we'll come up here. We'll dedicate babies this morning. Shout about that, everybody. Amen. What an honor it is to dedicate babies to the Lord. I think we have two or three families this morning. One family couldn't make it. I, I, I got a note about that. Uh, so maybe it's just two families. Right, right. Here's the other, we're dedicating her, right? Oh, no. <laughs> Y'all forgive me. I'm wait, waiting for the other family.
Oh, there they are. I'm like, man, I know they're supposed to be two or three. Yeah, come on down over here, Antoine. Thank you. Hey, pretty girl. Hey, man. What's up, man? Hi. Hi. All right, Kelda. All right, let's have a microphone. Let's uh, let's give give everyone your name, your wife's name, and uh, the, your son that we're dedicating. Hello, church family. My name is Alice Cornwell. This is my wife, Fanny Nicole. Um, this is Israel Tuzan Cornwell that we're dedicating today. My daughter, Ani, and ooh, slide. <laughs> family and supporting cast is behind us. Yeah, hey, you got supporting cast there, buddy. Praise the Lord. All right, Antoine. Uh, praise the Lord, family. Uh, Antoine and my wife, Kelda. Um, this is my son, Alexander, and Samaya here, and baby Colin. And then we have our mothers, uh, Katie Gibson and right. Nina, and then family. Good. Baby's name again? Uh, Kylan. 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 Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that children are the heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. When the disciples tried to shoo away the children who were coming to Jesus, Jesus rebuked the disciples and says, let the children come to me, for of such is the kingdom of God. We believe that God will honor our faith as we dedicate these babies to the Lord this morning. The parents have viewed a parenting video and have agreed to raise their children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. And so... We ask you to join your faith with ours as we go to the Lord in prayer and as we connect with him in the spirit to pray and to speak words over these children and the parents. Amen. Oh, our Father, our Father, what an honor it is to dedicate children to you. Lord Jesus took children in his arms, laid his hands on them and blessed them. My Father, in the name of Jesus, standing in the office of the pastor with the anointing that you've called me to, with great pleasure I dedicate Israel Cornwell to you in the name of Jesus. God, this day I separate him in the realm of the Spirit for your glory and for your service. I decree that he'll come to know you at an early age and be filled with the Holy Spirit and will never go the way of the world. He'll grow in wisdom, God, in stature, and in favor with you and with man. You'll give him the tongue of the learned, and great will be his peace. Father, rivers of living water will flow out of his innermost being, bringing life to those around him. Thank you that the word of God shall be in his mouth to decree the good news of your love, good news of redemption. We decree and I decree divine favor around him, divine health, miracles of healing and health throughout his body. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, for using Israel for your glory. And I separate you now, Israel, in the realm of the spirit for the kingdom and the service of the living God. I dedicate you to the Lord Jesus Christ, the universal and supreme head of the church. I dedicate you to our God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ angels of the living God and camp round about him defend and accompany deliver protect strengthen and even speak to if need be in the name of Jesus Israel you belong to God from this moment forward in the name of Jesus thank you Lord amen Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I bless these parents. Yes. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I ask that you Jesus. would perfect those things that concern them. Complete the work that you have begun in yes. them, Lord. 
By your grace, give them fresh new start where they need it. Oh, thank you, Lord. And be a fence around them, oh God, that they will sense when they are getting out of your will. Yes, my God. Help them to lift you up in their homes and let your love and peace reign in their homes, dear God. Help these people to represent you properly in front of their children. That their children will grow up to know what a wife and a mother is to be like and what a husband and a father is to be like. God, help them to take their responsibility seriously because you certainly do. And a part of raising these children is setting an example in the home. Let it be so, Father. And I bless them in their spirit, soul, and body, and financially, materially, socially. Let every need be met that they may be a blessing to their children. And we thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank Shout you, about it, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Kylan, right? Kylan Gibson. Oh, my Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. As I stand in the office of the pastor, accompanied with the anointing of that office, with great joy, I dedicate Kylan Gibson to you this morning. And I separate Kylan in the realm of the spirit from the kingdom of darkness. And I decree he only belongs and will live and walk in and dwell in the kingdom of God's dear son. He'll come to know you at an early age and be filled with the Holy Spirit and rivers of living water will flow out of his innermost being to bring life and health to those around him. I thank you, Lord, that he'll grow in stature and in wisdom and in favor with you and with man and great shall be his peace. He'll walk in the tongue of the learned, the wisdom of God. Divine protection I decree around him in the name of Jesus all the days of his life to accompany, defend, deliver, fight for, strengthen, and even speak to in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that he grows in stature and in wisdom and in favor with you and with man. No weapon formed against him shall prosper. I speak divine healing and divine health strength over him and into him in the name of Jesus. Thank you that he'll lead me and set many free by the authority in the name of Jesus. Your word shall be in his mouth all the days of his life. And now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I dedicate you, Kylan Gibson, to the Lord Jesus Christ, to the kingdom of God's dear Son, to the Heavenly Father, the creator of heaven and earth. I dedicate you to live for him and serve him all the days of your life and to know him in a personal way. So thank you, Lord, for meeting his every need. Thank you for his divine protection. Thank you, Father, for favor. Thank you, Lord for going before him and making every crooked place straight. You belong to God from this day forward, Kylan, in the name of Jesus. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. Father, I bless these parents. I command every infirmity to loose their bodies now in the name of Jesus Christ. I curse every germ, every virus associated with sickness and disease commanded to die and leave their bodies now. I Thank speak you, healing and life into their physical bodies. Thank you, Lord. Strengthen them to be the parents they need to be, Father. Spirit, soul, and body. And help them to be godly examples in their home for their children. That they will grow up knowing what a husband and a father is supposed to be like. What a wife and a mother is supposed to be like. Oh, God, let them be a testimony, this family be a testimony, a godly example of a Christian family and yes, what it's supposed to be like. 
perfect the things that concern them. Complete the work you've begun. And by your grace, give them fresh starts where they need it. Thank you, Lord, for miracles, divine intervention in their affairs, divine protection around them. No evil shall befall them or plague come near their dwelling. Thank you, Lord. They will not be accident prone, for your angels will guard them. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Be blessed. Amen. Jesus. Praise God. Come on. Hallelujah. Shout about it, everybody. Amen. What an honor it has been for us to dedicate your children this morning. God bless you. You may be seated. Pretty girl. Praise you, Jesus. Pretty girl. Pretty girl. Thank you. All right. Praise God. Wasn't that beautiful dedicating those babies to the Lord? Hey, Amen. It's been my honor all these many years to dedicate children, and uh, we just give God all the glory for it. You know, when uh, Marlon got up to minister in, 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 by the Spirit of God and the things that she was ministering started uh, getting my mind in a whole different direction than I was planning on uh, sharing this morning. And, and so I've just been in my spirit determining if God wants me to go in that direction. The, the, the uh, sound booth doesn't have any of the notes if I go in this direction. Uh, you know, Marlon was talking about how, you know, God loves you, isn't that right? And how God wants you to ex experience him and to know him and, and to understand that he's with you. And so I, I got a message in my Bible along those lines. It's, it's called ex what experiencing God can do, what, what experiencing God can do. And uh, I don't know. Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost for a second. See which direction he really wants me to go here. If I should continue where we left off last week or what. All right, praise God. I just kind of sense in my heart to stay the course, so we're going to stay the course. Let, let's uh, continue our lesson, lesson on uh, essentials of Christian living. And we left off last week talking about that the world has things to offer. You remember that? We're talking about the essence of Christian living and the things that we have to understand and embrace and know uh, so that we can really represent the Lord Jesus Christ properly so we can be strong in the Lord and things like that and never, never leave God. And one is to, to know that we must decrease and he must what? Increase. Uh, less of us and more of him. That's the essence of Christian living, that we die to ourselves. Paul says, I die daily. That's a whole different context there that uh, uh, theologians and things kind of have a different opinion on. But, but, the, but the thing is that Paul says, you know, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who what? Loved me and gave himself for me. Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ. In other words, this old man, Paul says in Romans 6, I, I, I consider myself dead to sin and alive unto God. And, and so the, the, the first point essential is that we, we die to ourselves. We decrease. He increases. Secondly, we said that we have to understand that we matter to God, and God is concerned about every aspect and area of our lives. Is that right or wrong? And thirdly, we said how we cannot deny the faith. It's so important that we don't deny the faith of God, that we never walk away from the faith that God has uh, shown us and given us in the Word of God, that we don't abandon or deny it. And in the midst of that, uh, getting to the latter part of the message, we said that the world has something to offer, that we have to admit that the world does have things to entice us, right? And let's, let's remind ourselves, let's look at Luke chapter 4. We used that scripture on, on last uh, week. Luke chapter 4. Luke 
This is one of the temptations that Satan presented to Jesus. The Bible says in Luke chapter 4, verse 5, the second temptation. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the what? All the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Amplified says, and he said to him, to you I will give all this power and authority and their glory, all their magnificence, excellence, preeminence, dignity, and grace. For it has been turned over to me, and I give it to whomever I will. Who turned it over to him? Adam. Adam turned over his authority to Satan. Everything that the world had to offer, Adam turned it over to Satan. And Satan says, it was given to me, and I can give it to whomever I will. All the glories of the world, all the authority, all the excellence, all of the magnificence I can give to whomever I will. And then we read in Hebrews chapter 11, let's turn over there, how Moses said in the uh, 25th verse, or it says about Moses, that is, that he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. So sin has pleasure, and the world offers us pleasure. But we have to understand that in order not to abandon or deny the faith, we have to make a strong decision that we don't want the world. And the world is constantly enticing us in every shape, form, or fashion. And let me give you a statement that I will use a little later on, but I'll give it to you now, that human reason is always the rival of God. Human reason is always the rival of God. In other words, you know, uh, we can always, when, we're, when things come our way, our minds are trying to tell us it's okay to do this. And yet the word of God is clear. Come on, talk to me. That this is something we separate ourselves from or that we avoid. But human reason is the rival of God. And that's what, that's what got Eve in trouble. She was reasoning with Satan. Isn't that right? right. And, and that's what has gotten all of us in trouble. You know, God will tell us something. We'll know something in the word of God. We'll be prompted in our spirit about something and then our minds. Human reason. Is always the rival of God. And, 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 and we, have to, we have to know that God says, trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and lean out into our own understanding. In all of our ways, do what? Acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. The devil will always try to give you a reason why you should do what you do. And what you do is wrong. And what you're going to do is wrong. Are you following this? All right. So now, what does the world have to offer? What are some of the pleasures that the world will try to offer us? Number one is fun. We mentioned this last week. The world will, and, and when we say world, we're talking about bail, and we say bail because, remember, we said we have to choose. But Elijah said, why halt ye between two opinions? If Baal is God, choose him. So Baal represents the world. Say world. world. So what does Baal or the world have to offer? Right? One, one is fun, what we think is fun. Right? Come on, talk to me. But, but after you, you have your fun, you have to be ready to take your medicine for it. Because the wages of sin is death. And Moses chose the affliction of God or, or the people of God rather, rather than the pleasures of sin for a season. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 11, I believe it is. I want you to see something here. 
in, in verse 9 in the Amplified Bible, Ecclesiastes 11, verse 9. So the world offers fun. Yeah, hey, come on, man. We're going to have a good time. This is fun. This party, this club, whatever it is, this video, this whatever. Going to have a good time. Going over here to this guy's house and all the girls and guys going to be there, whatever, going to the movie and, and whatever it is. Now, it says here, rejoice, O young man, in your adolescence and let your heart cheer you in the days of your full grown youth and walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. But no, but no, but no. Go ahead and do what you want to do. Go ahead and have the fun that you think the world has to offer you. Go ahead and think as a Christian you're missing out and you need to go ahead and at least try it. You need to go ahead and do what the other people are doing because they seem to be having so much fun. And when they come back and talk to you, they say, you missed it. You should have been there. We did this. We did that. Go ahead. Do what you want to do. The author of Ecclesiastes says to young people, it says rejoice, put it on the screen again. It says here, and walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. Amen. Know that one day you're going to stand before God. Amen. No, no, no one thing, buddy, that, that what you call fun, if it isn't godly fun, you're going to stand before God and it's going to mess you up maybe for eternity. Then it says in the next verse, therefore remove the lust. Remove it because you're going to stand before God having been enticed by this world by what so-called fun is. Go ahead if you want to. It says therefore remove the lust that end in sorrow and vexation. Notice why it says it ends. It ends in, 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 in guilt and shame. It ends with grief. It ends with, how could I have done that? Why did I do that? Oh, now, Kali, I wonder if I'm pregnant even. Oh, my God. So go ahead. Fun. It offers you fun. Remove the lust that end in sorrow and vexation from your heart and mind. Remove it from your where? Heart and mind. How can it get in your heart? How can it get in your mind? There's a way it gets in there. Isn't that right? But remove it from your heart and mind and put away evil from your body for youth and the dawn of life are vanity, transitory, idle, empty, and devoid of truth. That's why young people should not seek counsel from other young people. Amen. You're devoid of truth. You don't have the season. Amen. Amen. You haven't lived long enough. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. And hopefully you got a good mom or daddy Amen. that knows God Amen. and knows the word and loves Jesus. And you won't fight them all the time, but listen to them Amen. because they're trying to save your life. Because the world offers fun, but it will destroy you. Totally, totally destroy you. And then if you get pregnant as a teenager or something like that, the thought comes to your head, abortion, abortion. And then the boy might say abortion. Planned Parenthood to get happy when you hear them, when they hear you even thinking about abortion. Then you have to wrestle with that. And then if you make the wrong decision the rest of your life, guilt and shame and condemnation until Jesus can set you free. Amen. Amen. It'll torment and haunt you. Hello. Amen. But the world offers it to you. Come on and dance. We're going to have a good time. The world offers it to you. Come to the party. 
Then all of a sudden you're at the party and they put on a slow record and then the boy want to talk to you while you slow dancing and dee 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 whispering in your ear. And why are we going to stay here? Let's go out to my car or let's go. That's right, pal. That's good. Fun! Then you come home with shame because you were raised to know God. You were raised in church. Are you here? But now, guess what the problem is? Now you got to start trying to remove that from your mind. And remove that from the seed, remove the seed that got planted on the inside of you. Are you here? You got to stay away from these young people and parents that say, you too protected. You, 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 you too guarded. Say, I sure am. Glory to God. I'm guarded from hell. I'm guarded from sin. I'm guarded from the devil. I'm guarded from what the enemy is trying to do to my life. The greatest teacher is never experienced. You need to try. You need to experience it. It's not the greatest teacher. Wise people learn from other people's mistakes. And all of us have been fools and it's time for us to be wise. Amen. And, and so the world offers fun. But if it's not godly, it'll destroy you and take you away from God. Then as it was written in Ecclesiastes, understand you'll stand before God one day. Amen, Amen, everybody. And I think I told you this last week, the world has to have amusement and drugs and sex and alcohol to come to cover up rather emotional and spiritual issues. See, everything that looks fun out there and glitter and happy and all that, you know, it's, it's, it's many, many times a cover up. Mm-hmm. And they're using amusement and drugs, sex, alcohol to cover up emotional and spiritual issues. Yeah. So true, sir. So true. Yes. But just think if you just stay with Jesus and stay with the word of God, you can stay emotionally strong and spiritually strong and emotionally healthy. Come on, talk to me. Blessings, blessings, yes, yes. And that's what God desires and wants from all of us. And so don't, don't get caught up in the world. The world always leaves you astray. Always leaves you astray. And then leaves you. The world always leaves you astray, but then they'll always leave you too. When you, when you stop providing whatever you provided, they'll leave you. When you stop doing whatever you guys were doing, they'll leave you. And so understand the world, it offers fun, but there is no fun, good fun without God. There is no fun. That's the way I should put it, without God. And and then the world, number two, it offers possessions. Possessions. And the world always puts things in front of our eyes. Always. And we all have to guard ourselves from the craving for and of possessions. Just want, we want, we want, we want, we want. Always understand what Jesus said on two occasions I'll think of, I think of right off the bat. One is this. He says, a man's life does not consist of the abundance of things that he possesses. Says, a man's life doesn't, isn't made up of what you possess. That's not life. That's not life. What you have, what you own, what you can show people, that's not life. 
but the world will offer you possessions. Go after this. You want this, don't you? Look what other people have. You got to have that possessions, possessions, possessions. Let's look at a scripture in Luke 16. Put it on the screen, verse 15, I believe it is. Luke 16, verse 15. Now, let, let's start above that. Go, go to verse 12 or so. I'm just kind of in my mind. Go, let's go to verse 12. Let's see if that's where I want to start. Let's go to verse 13. I like that. No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You can't serve God and mammon. Next verse, please. Now, the Pharisees who were lovers of money, lovers of what? Any lovers of money people in here? So glad you were silent. <laughs> or you had great discipline. I don't love money. I, I don't love stuff. When, when, I, when I was a teenager, I, 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 I'm telling you, I don't know if this was when, when I came home for Christmas after being in St. Louis for a year, you know, living with the, the, one of the coaches, you know, that coached uh, the late Arthur Ashe, uh, you know, I, or if it was before then. But, but my mom and dad, they always did a spread for Christmas. How many had parents like that? I'm telling you, man. And, and later on, I found out they went into debt every, every year for Christmas. All right? But anyway, I remember one Christmas, you know, and I believe it was when I came home from St. Louis, you know, where I was living for that year. And my mom had bought, and dad had bought me a, a three-fourth uh, length leather coat. Mm. Wow. It was nice. <laughs> I looked at that and I said, why you buy me this? <laughs> they look. But all, so many young people have this. I mean, look how nice it is. Look how fashionable it is. I mean, that's what they wear today. Mom, I don't want this. They look so broken. But there's always been something in me where stuff doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Possessions don't matter to me. Yeah. But what I'm saying is the world offers possessions. Yeah. And it'll try to get you hooked on having more stuff. Right. And a life doesn't consist of stuff. Right. In the 1800s and even 1900s, great men of God, even the late Dr. Sumrall, he said, I don't own anything. I'm going to leave this earth without owning anything. So see this house I live in? I don't own that house. I don't own anything in it. I don't want to own anything. I gave my whole heart to God and God alone. And nothing on this earth will take the place of God or challenge me when it comes to God. Men of God in other centuries, they would go to heaven without having owned anything. One man of God had 38 pounds in, in, his, in, his, uh, in his possession when he passed. And if he had known, they said that he even had 38 pounds, he would have given that away before he passed. What am I saying? Disconnect. Have what you want, but don't let it have you. Amen. And don't keep craving more. Yes. Don't keep having to have something bigger Amen. and better than somebody else. Amen. Let's put it back on the screen. The scripture. They were lovers of money. They also heard all these things and they derided Jesus. They didn't like what Jesus taught. They, they just, well, anyway, my mama, you don't want this leather coat, son? No, mama, I, I don't want it. But it costs, mama, I, I don't want it. I, I just don't want it. Well, me and you, 
Me and your daddy got to take it back, but we thought you'd like something like this. No. I've never been, I got to have something, Minister Isaac. Yes, sir. Never been that way. Never been, I got to, I need more. Miss School know that. We, we've never been that way, mm. ever. Because the world wants to take you from God through stuff. Amen. Love not the world. Don't even love the things that are in it. Yes. Don't love anything in this world. Amen. Period. Amen. Enjoy it, but don't love it. Amen. If you can't get it, don't cry over it. Amen. If you can't get it, don't go into debt to get it. Amen. You don't have to impress anybody. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so we'll read on now. Please forgive me. Uh, they were lovers of money. They heard all the things that Jesus taught, you know, about faithfulness and, and not serving two masters and all those kinds of And they just derided him because they were lovers of money, man. And next verse. Let's read down. It says, and he said to them, you are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is highly esteemed, notice, what is highly esteemed among men, a big house, a two and three cars, and being able to go on vacations five times a year or three times and we're going whatever, you know, before all this, you know, pandemic stuff, being able to just travel and whatever. It says, what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. You need to look at that and other translations and things like that. Let's read on. The law and the prophets were until John, since that time, the king, ah, I have to turn and see what else I want to look at there. Let's just move on to my next point. Say possessions. possessions. I will be free of possessions. Say it out loud. I will be free of possessions. You know that rich young ruler, right? right? Went away sad. Thought he was going to lose out. But after he left, Peter said, we've left all to follow you. What about us? Jesus said, there's not one person that will leave everything for my sake in the Gospels that won't in this lifetime receive so much more, a hundred times more, and, in, and also eternal life. But he couldn't tell the rich young ruler that ahead of time. Are you following what I'm saying? He just had to see where the man's heart was. And sometimes God's going to see where your heart is. Amen. Give $5,000 away. Amen. Give $10,000 away. Give $15,000 away. Amen. Give $500 away. Give that car away. Sometimes he's just going to test you. Amen. Are you here? He proved Abraham, tested Abraham, give me your son. We'll see where your heart is. Thank God we'll pass the test. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I believe in you. Believe. Say, I know you'll pass the test. Pass. All right, so the world offers possessions. And thirdly, the world offers position and fame. And I'm getting stuck. I'm spending too much time on these things. No, number four, the world offers all that, all that the world calls or portray, portrays as success. Everything that the world calls or portrays as success, the world will offer you that. And it seems like, man, that's what's going on. That's what I want. That's living. May I tell you what, boy, I'm really happy me when I have these kinds of things. And what the enemy tries to do is pull us away from God. Amen. Now, let me give you this statement I think I want you to have. The world is de designed, everything in the world is designed to take you away from God. Everything. Everything in this world is designed to take you away from God. It has to be designed that way. Why is that, Pastor? Because Satan is the God of this world. 
He's the prince of the power of the air. He hates God. He doesn't want you serving God. He doesn't want you living for God. He doesn't want you close to God. He wants anything in your life that will come between you and God. So he designed this world in a way that it will take you away from God if you let it. Say, I won't. I won't. We have to understand that. Now, I said this last week, I'll give it to you again. The problem is when you worship the world or bail or engage or surrender to the world, you become worse than when you started. I've never seen a person yet that once they start getting into the world, they don't get worse than when they first began. Their attitude changes, their personality changes, their words change, their body language change. Many times they become, you know, rebellion and obstinate and, and critical and judgmental, don't want to go to church, don't want to have nothing to do with church. You know, all they want is, you know, to go in their room and shut the door and listen to what they want to listen to and do what they want to do. Everything changes because the world takes you further away from God. Are you hearing this? It makes you worse than when you first got into it. Are you here? Yes, Got it, Joshua? Yes. Amen. You know I knew you were here, right? <laughs> How you doing, man? Good? All right. Good, good, good. All right, now, what does God offer? That's an easy question to answer. I mean, when you weigh the pros and the cons, if you have a sound mind, you'll choose God. Amen. I mean, if you, just, if, you, if you just got any smarts, any form of an IQ, if you weigh the pros and the cons of serving God as opposed to the devil, you'll choose God. Amen. You'll do just like Jesus did. I'll worship the Lord my God and him only will I serve. Get thee behind me, Satan. Let me hear you say that. Get thee behind me, Satan. Say it like you mean it. Get thee behind me, Satan. Well, next time you have to say it, you say it just like that. Amen. Next time you're tempted, next time some friend, let's go here and you know it's wrong and shouldn't be going there. Get thee behind me, Satan. Isn't that what Jesus turned to Peter and said, get thee behind me, Satan? He was talking to the spirit that was influencing Peter at that time. And so many times, spirits can influence all of us if we're not on top of it. Yeah. Remember what I said about backsliding, protecting ourselves? We, the first thing I said, don't ever think you're above it. Yeah. So don't ever think that you can't be influenced by a devil. Yeah. Right after Peter said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God, here he comes, influenced by the devil. Yeah. And Jesus had to turn to him and say, get thee behind me, Satan. All right. So now what does God have to offer? Very quickly, let's get into this. God offers, you know, inward cleansing, you know, from all the pain and hurt and the, and the, and the stress and all the disappointments and all the bitterness and all the things that this world brought to us uh, uh, in our upbringing, sometimes in our home. You know, we, we experience things. There's been abandonment. There's been divorce. There's been uh, incest. There's been all kinds of things in a home. There's been physical physical abuse. You know, I've talked to so many people over the years. They watch their daddy beat on their mama. They watch their daddy walk out the door and leave the seven children and the mama to fend for themselves. God will cleanse you. And all the sins that any of us have gotten into, God will cleanse us. Lift your hands and thank God that he'll cleanse you. Thank you, Lord, that you'll cleanse us from every sin and every wrongdoing we ever got involved in. You'll cleanse us from every wound, every hurt that we ever experienced. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why you can't judge people. You don't know what they went through. You have no idea. Story goes how a man was on a train or plane, whichever one it was, plane he was, and we had two or three children, and before he knew it, his children were out in the aisle on that plane, and, and a passenger was thinking, what kind of daddy is this? What kind of father is this? 
And then finally, she couldn't take it anymore. And went and said, don't you see your children? Don't you see your children? You need to get them in their seat, whatever it is. And he said, oh, I'm sorry. I was so out of it. Oh, man, their mom just died. Can't judge people. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know why they're acting the way they're acting at a particular moment in time. Come on, talk to me. All that woman did was judge him not handling his children. His mind was on the fact their mother just died. Mercy, Lord. You don't know the incest people have experienced growing up. You don't know how often their dad beat them and beat them and beat them. Now they have an issue, an emotional challenge. You're going to judge them. Why they act like that? I mean, they go to the same church. They in church. They hear the same word because God is still working the cleansing and the healing through them. Come on, in them. And it hasn't totally manifested yet. Who are you to judge another man's servant? Take your tongue off of another man's servant. Hallelujah. They belong to God. Yeah. Amen, everybody. Yeah. But God offers cleansing. He offers forgiveness. He offers peace. He offers joy. Isn't that good? He offers peace. He says, my peace I give you. My peace I leave with you. Hallelujah. Not as the world gives. These things I've spoken unto you that in me you might have joy and that your joy might be full. You stay with God, you'll have joy in the midst of negativity. You can have joy in the midst of what's called sorrow and negative circumstances. And people wonder how come you can still smile because on the inside of you, your Redeemer is living and the Holy Ghost is working on the inside of you because you received a joy from your Father. Are you here? I'm telling you, man, if you got any sense at all, you'll choose God. Yeah. You'll stop serving the devil right now. Yeah. And you'll give your heart to Jesus Christ. Yeah. You'll just turn away from everything the world is offering you. Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. And, and so I put down here, God offers relationship with him. That's what Mrs. Gould was talking about somewhat this morning. He offers development into a good soldier. Doesn't the Bible say be a good soldier? God will develop you and make you where you can endure hardships and, and you can overcome things and you won't be a crybaby and a little wimp and you won't cop out and you won't go back into the world. Amen. He'll develop you into a good soldier and we have to let him do that. He places us in the Father's house. There's heaven awaiting us. Shout about that, somebody. In my Father's house. There's many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. Glory to God. I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying with God. Anybody else staying with God? I'm not going to abandon or deny. And he also offers us an advocate, a counselor the Holy Spirit that will abide with you forever. He said, I won't leave you as orphans. I'm going to give you an, a counselor, the spirit of truth, an advocate. He offers direction and help in any situation. He offers victory. Now, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. You don't have to navigate your own life. You don't have to figure it out your own. Just be still and know that he's God. Just pray in the Holy Ghost long enough for the Spirit of God to bring the wisdom of heaven down into your spirit and into your mind. We can all make less bad decisions if we will receive the direction from heaven. Amen. 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 Because he's offer, he offers it. He offers direction. He offers protection. And he offers his presence and a commitment to you. I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. People come and go, but Jesus says, Lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. I've had people tell me, and I've mentioned this somewhat before, and I won't mention much of it, but I've had people tell me, you know, that 
when the Black Lives Matter and Antifa stuff started happening, and it still happens, but when it first came out and was flourishing like it was, and, 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 and I was so strong and adamant against them and, be, and against their teachings and philosophy and what they stand for, et cetera, that uh, because the, the people, uh, some of them stayed in this church, their friends cut them off. How can you be my friend and you and you there listening to Pastor Gould and you agree with that and stop that da 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 da. People come and go, but Jesus says, "I'll never leave you. I will never, never forsake you. I don't care what you're going through and how bad it gets and how low you get. I'll be there and pick you up." Put your feet on solid ground. And you're gonna and you're gonna you're going to reject a God like this, a father like this. You're gonna choose the world over a father like this? Who so loved you that he sent his son into the world to die for our sins? And so we're not going to deny or abandon him, will we? No. Say, I won't, Pastor. I won't. Praise the Lord. And everybody has to come to their own decision. Just like Joshua said, choose you this day whom you'll serve. You got to choose. And he even said, you're going to choose, you know, the, 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 the God of the Amorites and whatever other people he talked about. You're going to choose the, 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 the gods that your fathers begin to serve. You think it's hard to serve God? He said, you choose. But as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord, he said. And I trust every last one of us in this room, we have the same sentiments. Amen. You're not going anywhere, are you? Amen. You're not going to deny your faith or abandon your faith. And you're going to choose God in every situation. Is that right or wrong? Yeah. Boy, I tell you, I'm ready to transition to the next point. But the next point, I, I, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Let, let, let's transition to our next point relative to the essence of Christian living. And we'll see how far we get into it. But I want to transfer. I want to transition into it, that is. But before I do, every head bowed. Is there anybody in this room right now? You say, Pastor, I'm ready to choose God. I've chosen the world and what it had to offer, and I was wrong. I do have a brain. I can think. And now that you've laid it out, the difference between the kingdom of Satan and the kingdom of God's dear son and what each one offers. And everything that Satan offers is an enticement to get me away from God and to take me to hell. But I want to go to heaven and I want to live for God. And I want you to lift your hand right now, please. Anybody in the auditorium, before I transition, anybody at all, just lift your hand right now. If you're ready to say, Pastor, I'm giving my life to Christ or rededicate your life to God. Will you lift your hand now? You're ready to come back home to God. You got away from God. I see your hand, sir. You can, you can stand to your feet and come right on down to the front. Anybody else, you want to rededicate your life to God. Come on, if you raise your hand, you come on down to the front. Anybody else? If you've abandoned your faith, if you've denied your faith, I'm not talking about your personal faith that you try to operate in. I'm talking about the faith of, the, of God, the faith of the church, the doctrines of God. True. If you need to rededicate your life to Christ or give your life to God for the first time, won't you come down to the front right now, please? Uh, Matt, go pray with him, find out what's going on. And then a, a prayer partner, get up there too and just tell him what he needs to do afterwards. Unless you've got materials with you now. All right. You can lift your heads. I just wanted, I, it was just in my spirit, I couldn't go forward until I did that.
problem. Hallelujah. Come on, pray for, pray for them. Pray for him, rather. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you for meeting the need of that gentleman. And those of you that are watching live streaming, you can call the number on the screen, 704-525-8638. Somebody's right now is ready to answer your phone call and talk with you about a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, 704-525-8638. God, glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. You know, the Bible says for us to be content with such things as we have. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. And not to be covetous and things like that, but to be content with such things as we have. Well, if I transition, man, I, I, I'll give you the point and I'm just going to jump down to something. I shared this with some men and some young and our, our men and on a Monday night. Uh, not everything, but some of it. And this was the, the, the fourth essential to Christian living, okay? And that is to, to, that we have to live and build our lives according to God's design. We have to live and build our lives according to God's design. I'm just going to, I think I'll just get to the core of it. And I'm going to jump all the way down, all right, for you in the, in the back, in the notes. But let me, let me first say this part of it. God told Moses to build the tabernacle according to the design and the pattern that I show you, right? Look at Hebrews chapter 8, and then I'll, then I'll take off from there. To build your life by any other design than what God has given us is rebellion unless you're just ignorant of the word of God. It's defiance. It's negligence. And then I'll say this, it's crazy. Now it says in verse 5, who served the copy and shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle. For he said, read it out loud, see that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. Moses, you cannot build this the way you want to build it. I don't care how smart you are. I know you were raised as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I know you have been exposed to the great architectural uh, buildings and even the, 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 the architects themselves building these great massive buildings in Egypt. I know you probably walked around and talked with them as they were being built. I know you probably asked questions and you had the greatest learning. You were exposed to everything that, 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 that a pharaoh would need to be exposed to. But don't you dare build the way you want to build. What is God saying? Don't you dare build your life the way you want to build it. Don't, uh, put it differently. Let it hit home. Don't you dare live your life the way you want to live it. And he's given the design. Come on, talk to me. Now, I'm just going to skip down to this. This is important. There are four major areas that God has given a pattern or design for. Four major areas that God has given a pattern or design for. And I'll give you all four, and then next week we'll delve into some of them. Okay? Lord willing. God may want me to go a different direction next week. Four major areas that God has given a pattern or design for. Now, this is where that thought came, where that statement that human reason is always, 
always a rival of God. Because we're to build our lives the way God wants us to build it, but then we have our own reason, our own rationale. Well, I'm going to do this. I just think I should do this. Well, everybody else is doing this. Everybody else says this. We build our lives according to God's design, right? And there's four major areas here that God has given a pattern or design for. Number one, and I'm going to give you all four, then I'll come back. Number one is our individual lives. God has already given the design relative and the pattern for us to go by relative to our individual lives, period. That design and that pattern is found in the life of Jesus, is found in the letters uh, called the epistles, He's already given the design. He's already told us how to build and construct our lives, how to live our lives, Amen. what to do with our lives. Are you here? Amen. Secondly, our homes. He's already given the design and the pattern on how to establish your home. You have no right to build your home the way you want to build it. I'm not talking about a physical building now. I'm talking about the inner workings of your home. God doesn't care how you build your house. He's not concerned about that, but he's concerned how you live in that house. He's given the design and the pattern for that. You have no right to come up with how you're going to live in your house, Brother Coffee. You got to find out how God's pattern is and live in your house according to God's pattern. Are you here? Thirdly, I'll give you this one as well. It's the church. And and if you if you come back on Sunday night, Mrs. Gould has been talking about the book of Acts and the pattern of the church, the design of the church. And we have no right for our churches to look contrary to the, work, to the church that Jesus established. Amen. I can't be a homosexual pastor. I can't have a sign out here, all homosexuals, you know, uh, please join our church. I can say, have a sign out that says everybody's welcome here. But I can't have a sign, homosexuals, please join this church. That's not God's design. Amen. And then the last thing here is the government. God has already given the design of how government is supposed to function. Amen. Period. The pattern and the design for those four areas. So, in five or ten minutes, let's talk about the home. Say, why you picked up? <laughs> oh my God. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 5. I picked that one first because that is such a no 1 Timothy 5, verse 8. Sure hope I wrote that down right. Yeah, I sure did. But if anyone does not provide for his own and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So God says, just start using that verse, that the pattern in a home is that the man, and I'm putting man here because Ephesians chapter 5 talks about how man is to love his wife as Christ loves the church. And Ephesians 6 talks about how a a, a father raises the children and and, uh, don't provoke them to wrath. So God puts the the primary responsibility for how things go in a home on the man's shoulder. All the women say amen, Amen. because very few men said anything. Now all the men say amen. Amen. And a man, God says, here is to provide for those of his household. A man shouldn't shun his responsibility in the home. A man shouldn't see his wife work two jobs and he got his feet up collecting, you know, uh, unemployment. (laughs) 
I'll pick another subject. <laughs> the man is supposed to do everything in his ability that's honest to provide for his household. I don't care if he has to work two and three jobs, but he's got to provide. That's the design. It's okay for a wife to work if she wants to, but the man should be assuring his wife that even though you're working, I want you to know it's on me. I will see to it that the needs of this home are met. Come on, man. That's God's design. No ifs, ands, buts about that. That is the, the, that, that is the design of God. Now, let's look at Ephesians 5 for just a moment here. So, so, so a man should be providing the, the, the basics of a home, right? And a man should be giving the companionship that's needed within the home, not just for if he's married, you know, his wife, but I'm talking about also the children. Children need companionship, right? Children need their dad. Children need their mom. Come on, talk to me. Ephesians chapter 5, we'll look at there, and I'm going to stop in just a moment here because, I, you know, the transition, you know, wasn't as smooth as I wanted it to be, and so I don't want to go too further, too much further into this. Ephesians chapter 5, the Bible says in verse 22, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Now, men, don't get that word submission all in your brain. You know, where you just don't act in wisdom and don't understand the word of God, right? Because so many times I've heard wives say this, my husband keep telling me I need to submit. I've heard man, men tell me, well, the Bible says my wife is supposed to be submissive. And then I'll say, well, it depends on who you're asking her to be submissive to. Hello? Can't be submissive to a tyrant, to a manipulator, to a controller. To a sinner. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And maybe I can kind of clean that up a little bit. But we just need to understand that, that when God writes the Bible, he's expecting both people to love him. And if you live with an unbeliever, the Bible says, don't desire to depart. You stay with him. And, and, you know, and let your, let your life, let it sanctify the home. But if he acts crazy and he wants to leave, let him go and praise the Lord. <laughs> Putting it in my own words. But it's right there in the Bible. But if he wants to go, let him go. And praise the Lord. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is what? Head of the wife. We're talking about God's pattern, God's design in the home. The husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Head of the wife. But how is Christ the head of the wife? Uh, the church, whether he's not beating us up, he's not condemning us. Is that right? He's loving and gentle and caring, and he'll correct. Isn't that right? But he doesn't do it like, you know, you're so bad of a person. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Oh, we're supposed to be the savior of our wives, of our families, of our children. Come on, talk to me. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. He's assuming you're a Christian, godly, spirit-filled, love God, love the word husband. I said it's an assumption here. He's writing to the church at Ephesus. He's writing to Christians, right? Yeah. It's no way I would say to a wife that's living with an ungodly, worldly, carnal, cussing, fussing, drinking man, the Bible says, 
Be submissive to your wife and husband in all things. No way, man. I'd sell a woman that. Are you here? I'd tell a woman, you better, you know, you pray, of course, and you seek God's wisdom and things like that, but you have to make sure you protect yourself. You have dignity. You have respect. You have self-esteem. You're not a piece of carpet. Amen. You speak up for yourself, and you draw the line when you have to draw the line. Let's stop on that. Let's stand on our feet. I, I'm, it's, it's 55 minutes, so anyway, praise the Lord. We'll pick up on some of this another time. Amen. Amen. All husbands that want prayer, come on down to the front, please. I didn't say that need prayer. I said that want prayer. All husbands that want prayer, come on down to the front. God's given us a design and a pattern for our homes. We have no right, like God told Moses, he said, see to it. You know what I like about that see to it? That means Moses, as you go around, you better look at your workers your skilled people and ask them, now you're doing it the way God told us, right? Well, I, well, Moses, you know, you know, I'm skilled in this. I just thought this would fit better. Moses I would say to them, no, you change that. Do it the way God said. And sometimes people will tell you men, you know, uh, well, you know, you need to try this. You need to try to do it this way. Maybe this will change things in your home. Is it God's design? Is it God's pattern? Men, you are so awesome and so special to God. You're so powerful. You're so dynamic. Let me have ministers up here, please. And mama, you get, the, get a mic. I want you to pray over these men, just a general prayer. And let me have some, some of my men ministers. And the only thing you guys are praying, men, you ministers, is that they will build their house according to God's design, build their marriage, build their family, and that whatever is not the way God wants it to be, that God, they'll see it, they'll know it, and they'll be willing to change it. Are you men willing to change anything that's not like God? Are you? Amen. Yeah. I have to do it all the time. All the time. And I'll tell Mrs. Gould, I'll tell, hey, I'm going to do better. I'm going I'm to change. And that's where our humility comes in and our desire to please God. And that's what we want. We want that desire always to be able to be willing to please God. Amen. So, Father, thank you for these men. Oh, how you love them. how you have put great responsibility on their shoulders that with your help and with your grace, they can walk out and by your spirit. God, we all have to build according to your design. Not according to some television personnel, you know, somebody on our job, some psychiatrist, psychologist, some whomever, Lord, we're to build according to your design. So thank you, Lord, for these men, their heart for you, their love for you, their desire to please you, their desire to be better husbands, better fathers, better providers in the name of Jesus. Honor their heart. You said you'll show yourself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards you. So, Lord, as they receive prayer, thank you for doing by the Spirit of God what needs to be done, showing what needs to be shown. And, Father, thank you that they will walk out your design as they see it more clearly in the Word of God and by your Spirit. 
So just go ahead now and pray for them. And you men lift your hands up when it's time to get prayed for. Lift your hands up, a sign of surrender, a sign, sign of, of, of receiving. Only when they get to you to pray for you. You're praying. You're praying. I haven't changed my mind. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. They'll build according to your design. You'll show them what needs to be altered or changed relative to their children, relative to their spouse. In the name of Jesus, and you'll show them by the Spirit more clearly what your design is for the home. Now, every minister stop. I'm going to let Mrs. Gould pray for them right now, these men. You men receive this prayer. Whatever's in your heart to pray for these men. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, because we are supernatural covenant church, we ask, Father, for supernatural covenant activity in the lives of these men. I decree in Jesus' name that the gifts of the Spirit are activated in their life. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is activated in their lives. The ministry of the angels of God are activated in their life. I ask for supernatural acts uh, from heaven to take place in the lives of these men. We're not just mere men. We're not just ordinary people, oh God. We're children of the Most High God. And there are, there are spiritual gifts and spiritual uh, power and resources available to help us to excel. There, it, there is to be a difference between us and the world. As husbands, as fathers, as leaders, let, let these men be strengthened with might by your spirit in their inner man and and. and and minister to them, let the resources of heaven become available with dreams and visions and gifts of the spirit and angelic ministry, oh God. In these last days, help these men, each and every one of them, and bless them, bless each one that has come forward for their humility and coming forward and yes. saying, I need help, I want help, yes. I want prayer. Just honor that, oh God. Yes. And let them see changes, positive changes, in their lives and in their homes. And we thank you for it yes. in Jesus' name. Jesus' Hallelujah. name. Amen. All right, ministers, go ahead. Keep praying. You going down? Okay. Praise the Lord. Men of valor. Mighty men of valor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can pray, play whatever you like. If uh, you're standing out there in the auditorium, I gave an invitation earlier for you to give your life to Christ or rededicate your life to God. If you didn't respond to that then and you're ready to do that now, and I want that gentleman that came earlier to come at this time. Bring your, bring everything you brought with you, coat, sweater, jacket, whatever, Bible. But if you, if you did not come earlier and you want to give your life to Christ or rededicate your life to God, here he is right here, John. Then I want you to please pick up whatever you brought with you and come on down to the front and just stand there right now and, and, and come on down to the front. If you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking with other tongues, then I want you to come on down to the front at this time and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then lastly, if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I need a church home and I believe this church is where God wants me to be and I want to find out how to join this church, then I want you to come on down to the front right now, please. So four invitations, salvation, rededication, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, church membership, if you're in this auditorium and you need to respond to any one of those, 
invitations. I want you to pick up whatever you brought with you. Please come down to the front at this time. Those of you that are watching through live streaming, you can call 704-525-8638. Someone will talk with you about being filled with the Holy Spirit. If you have interested in, interest in joining this church, let me tell you right now, you can take our uh, membership classes online. Just go to our website and follow the directions there. Anybody else you need to come? Salvation, rededication, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, church membership, I want you to come at this time. Just stand right on the light colored carpet. Just step right up. There's nothing special about it. You can step right in it. There you go. There you go. Anybody else? Sir, thank you for coming earlier. Thank you for coming back. And we just believe God to do in you and for you what you need because he loves you and he cares about you. I mean that, all right? I want you to go with John. He's going to take you to our prayer room, all right? And he's just going to, I think you need to get a little information so we can send you some materials and send you a letter. You will never, none of you will never get a letter from me soliciting. Never, ever. Never done that in 40 years. So don't be afraid to ever fill out anything because all it's for, generally speaking, is for us to follow up with a phone call saying thank you or something or follow up with a letter, all right, about why you came up here this morning, okay? Thank you so very much. And, uh, Whatever your spiritual need is, we call it met in Jesus' name. Thank you. I mean that. You're, you're loved by God. You're special to God. I want you to go with our sister right here. John, you can take him. Same applies to you. Returning back to the ministry. It's good to have you back. God bless you so much. I mean that. Good to have you back. I mean that sincerely. We love you and God loves you. I mean, that. go with our sister right there. God bless you. Church home. Church home. Well, I want to be the best pastor you ever had. Okay? And God bless you so much. I mean that. I want you to go with our sister right here. Are you going to get both of them? All right, so you kind of pause. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. And I believe for your spiritual need to be met because you're special to God and he loves you so much. All right. I want you to go with our sister right here, both of y'all. Come on, give them a hand, everybody. I'm sorry. Thank you, Lord. Do we have any first-time visitors with us today? If you are a first-time visitor, first time ever here at Victory, won't you please pick up whatever you brought with you? Come down to the front, please. Give me the pleasure of shaking your hand, looking you in the eye, and saying thank you for being with us today. And plus, we have a free gift that we like to give you. Anybody here, first-time visitors, if so, visitor that is, please come down to the front at this time. If I don't see anyone moving, we're getting ready to close out our service in just a moment. All right, I don't see anybody moving here. Marlon, any last announcements or anything? Thank you, Lord. Just a moment, we're going to close out our service. Don't forget Bible classes tonight at 7 o'clock for our children, our young people, and for our, our adults right here. Mrs. Gould will be teaching the Word of God. Our, uh, what is it, 16 to 18 year olds, right? Our 16 to 18 year olds will be right here in the dome, in the, in the meeting room. Uh, Minister Ezzy sharing a great Word of God with them every Sunday night. And we appreciate him so very, very much. Thank you, Lord. Let's praise the Lord for a minute while we're allowing them to finish ministering. Oh, Father, we love you. And we praise you. And we humble ourselves under your mighty hand. My Father, we make a fresh decision to detach ourselves from this world. God to separate ourselves 
but at the same time, Lord, to saturate this world with your love and your light and with the glory of God that's on us everywhere we go. We shall separate but not isolate in the name of Jesus as you call us your ambassadors. So thank you, Lord, for using us for your glory, Hallelujah. creating us a clean heart, oh God. Renew a right spirit on the inside of us. God, to be carnally minded is death. May our reason never, never, ever, God, be a rival to you. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. So thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit being at work in us. In the name of Jesus. Let's receive our benediction now, my brothers and sisters. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide and be with you all, both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Stay with God, right?